Good morning, everyone. It is Trudy Nielsen, Aboriginal Resource Teacher for SD73, and I am back. And it has been about a year since I've made a video because I think the last time I made a video I was in quarantine. And I'm back in isolation for a few days because I came into contact with COVID last week. And so I am self-isolating at home. Um, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to make a few videos and um, today I'm going to be showing you how to prepare pitch. So yesterday I went up into an isolated area and I harvested some Douglas fir pitch or resin and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. This is the jar I actually harvested, almost a full jar but I made a batch yesterday. So here's a couple of big chunks that I got from the tree. So I went to a tree that had some damage to it and when trees like this have damage, they try to heal themselves by um, sealing up their wounds with their pitch. So that's how you can find them. You can find sort of like holes or just like, you know, like little gouges in the tree and um, you can find this on those trees, same with pine trees and spruce trees. Um, interesting, this pitch uh, is actually similar in its properties as frankincense and myrrh, which has also been used for thousands of years um, in that area of the world. Um, everybody knows the story of Jesus and his birth. So um, that is basically what frankincense and myrrh is, it's sap. Um, dried sap. So, some of its uses. It's really good for um, breathing and cold and flu season and, um, well I'll just go over so I don't forget anything. Uh, it is used as a respiratory medicine and it can be applied externally as a rub. It's good for colds, flu, congestion, breaking up phlegm, opening up breathing, reducing irritating dry coughs, deepening the breath, and in doing all of that, it actually helps to calm you and <clears throat> give you a nice restful sleep. It's also really good for the skin. So it's good for things like eczema. It's good for things like sealing up wounds and burns and abrasions and cuts and scrapes. Um, it's also good for um, rheumatoid arthritis and joint inflammation. So those are just to name a few. It's an antimicrobial and um, and a barrier to infection. So totally an amazing property that we can use um, to make medicine. So today I'm going to do two things. I'm going to show you how to prepare the pitch in oil to make a salve and I'm also going to make a, a quick salve. So I have this much about one third of my jar full, and that would be the recipe. So it would be one third pitch, and then two to two to three to what is it? Two to three parts oil. So yesterday, excuse me, I had about this much, and I used, I filled it with oil, and I found that this was still very strong. So I'm going to use a little bit more oil today. So what I'm going to do to start is fill my, and I actually filmed yesterday, but my jar had a hole in it. <laughs> it was seeping out and I didn't realize until I had a huge mess all over my floor and my stove after I watched the video and I just kind of ignored it. But yeah, so make sure all of your materials are ready to go and um, are not, you know, damaged or anything like that. So I'm gonna fill this up all the way to the top. And then I'm going to just add a little bit more olive oil. And I think I'll probably even add a little bit more oil to my pot. And as I said, everything needs to be ready to go. So you need to prepare all your pots, all your spoons, all your um, measuring cups, all your strainers, all your jars that you're going to be pouring things into uh, ahead of time so you're not kind of like rushing around and trying to get everything in order as you're going. You need to be ready. So it is sticky and I want to see something about resinous or sticky materials that you're using. 
you need to have jars and pots and uh, clothing that you don't mind ruining. And those will be the pots and jars and materials that you will use each time you use uh, or prepare plants that have really sticky resiny um, properties. So I've got it all in my pot. I'm going to put that on my stove and warm that up. And in the meantime, we'll show you how to make the salve, the pitch salve, uh, that, with the oil that I prepared yesterday. So this was, it was one part pitch and then two parts oil. So I'm actually going to add a little bit more oil to this one because I found that one to be really strong. So this one is going to be a little bit less potent, which is okay. So note the color of this. So that's because the pitch um, is all melted into the oil. And the smell is like frankincense and myrrh. If you've ever smelt that, it's like citrusy, like grapefruity and lemony and um, just perfumey and just such a beautiful smell. Um, that's one of my favorite things about doing this is especially with the resinous um, plants that, that you use. The, the scent is just such a great part of working with um, resinous plants, especially. So I'm going to get everything out of there. I don't want to waste anything. Okay, so um, some people use a double boiler to melt the beeswax in to give it that um, more solid consistency. I just put my beeswax right into the pot and let it brew away and it's just fine. So then it's half a part beeswax. So if I had this much um, sap or pitch yesterday, I'm going to use about half of that. So I think, um, I don't want it too hard. I don't like it when it's too hard because you can't get your fingers in if you've got a jar like this and you kind of have to press. And I just like it when it's just a really nice, soft, smooth consistency that's easy to spread and you don't have to melt it when you get it on your skin. Uh, so I think I'm gonna use a piece like this. And I eyeball it, but just cause I've made a lot of it. So I sort of have a pretty good idea of how I like mine. And yeah, so I'm gonna put that on. Warm that up, and this is starting to heat up, and already the pitch is melting. And so basically, I'm just trying to get all those little pieces of bark that came off with the tree uh, off of the sap, and then I'm going to strain it um, so that there's no bark or other tree parts in my pitch oil. Um, and that's another thing when you're making. Um, or when you're harvesting the pitch, you really don't want to do a lot of damage to the tree, even though the spot that you're getting the pitch from is damaged. It's trying to heal itself. So you can really just, I mean, you can have a tool like a butter knife and kind of chip it off. Um, but if you can just kind of get those uh, trees that have the older, hardened, big pieces and just kind of just use your fingers, I think that's the best way. And this is actually melting down really quickly. So I'm starting to see the bigger pieces of bark come off. And then it starts to get really gooey and it starts to get really gummy and it's just really softening up. So you just really want to stir it so it doesn't just stick to the bottom of your pot. And how's that one coming along? Starting to melt. And just keep stirring it. And all the bark pieces will start to come to the uh, to the top. And this is starting to melt. And it is smelling so beautiful in here. Like I said, it's my favorite part. 
So I just think it's really interesting that cultures around the world have used this as medicine um, for thousands of years. And also as technology, so like as glue for um, different boats or for baskets. Uh, yeah, so if you read up on it, it's just a really interesting um, thing to learn about. All oh, plants, I think, are, and there's just so much to learn about each one. So this is kind of starting to bubble away. But like I said, I really want it to not have that gummy consistency. I really want it melted, so it's still gummy. This one is starting to melt. The beeswax is starting to disappear. And my jars are ready to go for the sap. My strainer is ready to go for the sap. So it's got this gummy, woody piece here. That's what I'm waiting for um, to melt. And that's almost melted and ready to jar up. Oh, I just, this is so beautiful. So I have always lots of tea towels and things that I'm prepared to ruin. Um, ready to go because when things like this spill, it's really greasy or when it's already got the beeswax in it, it hardens and then you've got a, you know, a big mess to clean up. So keep your workstation really clean. I'm almost ready. I'm going to give it about 30 more seconds. Oh, this is almost ready too. Yeah, so there's almost no gummy pieces left, and that tells me it's about ready to strain. Okay. Oh, so I did make some yesterday. And I got these cute little jars for my friend Mary. Thank you, Mary. And these are great for on the go, um, just in your bag or to take with you wherever and have on hand this size. Um, but I also got this like chopstick stick um, from a place in Surrey anyways. And this is good too. So like if you have say, whatever, like a cut or a scrape that you're, that you're wanting to put medicine on to help heal throughout the day, just popping this in your in your bag and just putting it on, or eczema. I, you know what, I just started to get a little patch of eczema here yesterday and I've actually been using this and it's looking and feeling a lot better. So even just a little rub like that, and that's really convenient too. So I like that. And this is good to go. Let's see this. I'll give that just a couple more seconds while I'm pouring my soap. As I was saying, oh, it's like it's so strong, but in a good way, and it's like you breathe it in and you can actually feel your sinuses just clearing and it just goes straight down into your lungs so you can understand why it's a respiratory um, medicine. So I found these awesome little jars also. They're great, like the ones that Mary gave me at the Dollarama. And uh, so I'm using those for my smaller batches. Um, I'm just going to pour the pitch oil that, are, that has the beeswax in it into my measuring cup. And I always use one with a spout because it's easier to pour if you're using um, really tiny um, containers. Uh, turkey booster is good too. So I'll just pour my little ones first. One, two, three of those. 
and then one, two, three. Perfect amount. So I will give those some time to cool. Don't take long. The little ones cool faster. And now let's strain our edge. Okay. What am I gonna do? I think what I'm gonna do is pour it into my measuring cup first in the stove. So batch by batch, and then I show you, um, I'm actually going to use this one because I don't mind if there's a little bit of, so it is hot, so I don't want my jar to crack, but uh, I find the mason jars usually are pretty good about not cracking. I should be doing this in the sink just in case, but I want to show you how it's done. So that's how it looks. It's all melted down. You can see the little bark pieces. And I'm just going to pour it. Beautiful. <laughs> it smells so, so nice. And that's what I'm left with from the bark and the little wood pieces. I do have a little bit more left. So I'm going to touch that because it's going to be hot. I'm going to pour the rest in my measuring cup. Perfect. So that turned out to be about four cups. And I'm going to pour the rest of here. And so that was uh, like not very much pitch. I went to about I don't know, maybe six, five, six trees, and I was able to get uh, about um, yeah, almost full, three quarters to almost full, a jar uh, like this. And so that was like I was able to make quite a bit of um, oil out of that. And so now I'm able to give it to my friends and family for all their conditions and ailments. And that's what makes me happy. That's the best part of all of this for me. That's why I do it. So thank you guys for coming today and watching. And I hope you learned something. I hope you try it. Also, the best part about harvesting is just getting out on the land and being in nature. And that's one of the things that I was reading about too. When you're going to harvest um, pitch, and you're in a, a coniferous forest or a pine forest, it's an immediate thing to breathe in deeply. And so it makes sense that this is something that is really good for the respiratory system and is calming and helps you rest and relax and feel good. So thanks for joining everybody and see you again soon.